So what's so leasing is re essentially a long-term rental. When you lease a car, uh, you sign a contract. It's like a cell phone contract, right? You know, nowadays they have these contracts where you bring your phone back, right? That's a new thing. Just give it back, so we'll charge you a little bit less. Uh, leasing is like that, right? So if you sign a lease, you're bound uh, by contract. It's usually two years minimum, right? So two years, you can go three, you can probably even go four, but two years is the minimum, right? So I will tell you, I, I don't really cover, I don't need to cover this, but when you consider leasing, the the it's usually a, at a dealership, it's a brand new car, right? They will charge you for wear, right? It's just wearing out. The seats will wear out, the tires will wear out, the engine will wear out, everything wears out. So they gotta charge you a little bit for that. Then they charge you for mileage. Did you know that the number one factor for determining the value of your car, the first thing that will affect the value is the kilometers on it, right? If you go to Kijiji and you're like, oh my goodness, that's a cheap car, right? Go look at the mileage. If it's a high, if the kilometers are high, that's probably why it's, it's so low, right? So they know if you use it and you bring it back, they're not going to be able to sell it for as much as um, it originally was. So wear mileage and then they want to make a little bit of profit. So in the background, that's what they charge you when they when you lease a car. They charge you for wear, for the mileage, and for profit. Okay. Uh, if you destroy the car, if you have a a dog, and the dog just absolutely wrecks the car, they're gonna charge you even more when you bring it back, right? So this is just talking normal wear, in okay, normal wear. So when you look at the the payment they're giving you, this is what they're charging you in the background, okay? Uh, actually, a big one that I forgot is depreciation. This is a big one, they also charge for that. Uh, you all know that a car loses its value as soon as you drive it off the lot, right? In fact, most cars lose half of their value from brand new they lose half of their value within the first four years down to half right uh depends if it's import domestic right toyota versus chevy or whatever but you lose a lot of uh, the value right off the get-go so we're going to talk about some pros and cons right uh keeping in mind i give you a formula here the total lease cost, just leasing the car, would be a down payment. Uh, I will make sure you understand that you don't get it back. Don't get it back. If you make your down payment, you don't get it back, it's gone. So quite often they say, you know, a lease with a, a thousand down or zero down. Sometimes there's no, no down payment, right? And then this part here is, the monthly payment, why is it times 1.12? That's taxes, right? Taxes are 12%, so we multiply the payment by 1.12. And then we multiply that by the number of payments. So those would be total payments. Total payments. Okay? And then there's something we call mileage charge. mileage cost most if not all uh, leasing lease agreements they give you a limit on the kilometers you can drive usually it's a yearly amount so they might say you can drive 20,000 kilometers per year which means if it's a two-year lease if it's over 40,000 that you bring it back they're gonna charge you extra okay for every kilometer you went over the limit so let's talk about some pros and cons. The biggest pro is lower monthly payments. Uh, let's put the cons a little bit further out. I, I miscalculated that one. So we're just, just gonna do pros and then cons. Lower monthly payment. And you'll see me 
uh, shorten like some words here. Monthly payment. You only pay for a portion of the entire value. That's the main reason why the monthly payments will be lower compared to buying a brand new one, buying the whole thing. Okay. You can say that there's no hassle no negotiating when lease is over simply lease another one so we're talking if you are into leasing you would simply lease the car the lease is over, bring it back, get another one, so you constantly have a new car. A lot of companies like that, right? Fleets like MTS, Bell, Hydro, big companies, they don't want to deal with breakdowns, so they rather just lease cars and or trucks, right? And then they keep on having newer cars, and they don't have breakdowns, which is negatively impacts their performance right there's lower maintenance costs okay if you always lease your vehicles will be under warranty. Your vehicles will be under warranty. This is very appealing to businesses. Can be a tax write off, right? can be a tax write-off for businesses. So some businesses don't mind it because they can write off the cost of the payments. I still think that small business owners wouldn't go for it because it still costs more overall. We can argue that it's safer to continuously lease, okay? You have the latest, the latest safety features. Backup camera, lane departure assist, right? A lot of these features, right? Like some cars, they will slam the brakes before you even Get to your brakes right if, if it senses you're too close to a car it will like all these things uh, accumulate um, you can try cars before buying them right you can uh, when the lease is over, you will always get the chance to buy it. I have never leased a car, but I've talked to people that have. Usually when you sign your contract, it says it right on the contract. When the two years are over, you're going to owe us this much, right? So the car right now is 30 grand. After two years, you're going to have to pay us 20 grand, right? Plus taxes. So you kind of know already how much you owe them. So if your lease is over, you either return it, walk away, or you at that point you buy it okay if you like the car you like the features then you buy it so you know a lot of the used cars you see on on car lots those are actually lease returns quite often you're buying somebody else's lease uh, so just keep that in mind and I'm a little bit 
uh, worried about that because uh, if you lease a car, do you do you really care about the car? Like if you have employees driving that car, they may not drive it nice and smooth, right? They'll just uh, be a little bit aggressive with it. I don't know. So you don't know if the engine or the transmission has been uh, kind of pushed to the limits. No. So just keep, just I guess watch for it. Most cars are built for it anyway. So let's talk about some cons, right? You have mileage costs, right? Mileage cost is the big one, right? You usually uh, have a limit limit on the kilometers you can drive. Usually stated as a yearly amount. You usually have a limit on the kilometers. So for example, right, it could say 20 kilometers, 20,000 kilometers per year, right? So that means that if it's a two-year lease, you're allowed 40,000. If it's a three-year lease, you're allowed 60,000 and so forth. So if you, if you drive long distances, if you live outside the city, I would not recommend you leasing a car because you're probably going to go over it in no time. Okay. 20,000 is normal average driving in the city, right? A year. If you go further distances, road trips and stuff, eh, not so sure about that, right? Because going to BC, right, that's 5,000 kilometers. Is it round trip 5,000 or one way? I have to check. But it's thousands of kilometers. Um, uh, may be charged for excessive, okay, where, okay, you may be charged extra for that, um, or damage, or damages. So, if you park the car in the winter and you kind of drive a little bit into a snowbank, and it cracks your bumper. Bumpers are expensive, guys. Uh, it can it can be a thousand bucks just for a bumper. Did you know that? It's crazy. Uh, they will charge you for it. You bet. Uh, you you never own a car. You never actually own a car or the car. Can't can't use it as an asset. The bank will often ask you, what do you own? We, we want to give you this loan. What do you own? How many cars do you own? You can't say that you own it, right? So you can't use it as collateral. Collateral is that, like they, they kind of have it in case you don't pay your loan, they can take your car. Okay. You can't modify it. This is big, right? Can't modify it at all. You can't put that uh, resonator on your uh, exhaust, right? Or a, or a spoiler or anything like that. Can't do that. Um, I'll just tell you this one more thing. This is just a term. I have more, but I'm calling it quits there. Uh, term residual value. Residual value. Okay. It's the value of the car at the end of the lease. Think of residue. Right? Residue is how much is left over. Residual, residual value. How much is left uh, at the end. And so this is what you would pay when you, uh, when you, when you want to buy it, if you want to buy it at the end of the lease. Sometimes they'll cut you a deal. They'll be like, hey, you got all these damages, right? Uh, if you buy it, then we won't we won't charge you for them, right? Oh, you're over in your mileage? If you buy it, we won't worry about it because you're going to take it anyways, right? We don't have to worry about finding another buyer. 
Okay, let's do some math here. So leasing will be compared to financing. That's, that's going to be the main idea, right? Should you lease or should you just go ahead and finance that car? Because both involve payments, right? So if you if you didn't catch all of this, I'll post the video, okay? I want to get to the example. Okay, so example, Sam finds a Honda Civic. She would like to purchase at a local dealership. And there's a the price is twenty thousand plus five percent and seven percent GST PST. Uh, she will choose between the two options. Option one, purchase the car, right? You purchase the car with a loan. There's a five thousand down payment, and the rest will be financed at a six point nine nine interest rate, compounded monthly, and there will be monthly payments for five years. Okay, that's option one. Option two, select a lease. Don't do it. Anyways, for the lease, she will pay 5000 down, a 401 per month plus taxes for 48 months. At the end of the lease, she will have the option to purchase the car, right? Only at the end of the lease, she'll purchase a car of 12000 plus taxes. I will highlight the 12000 plus taxes. There's a limit of 20,000 kilometers per year. If she drives more, you pay eight cents per kilometer uh, over that. What will be the total cost of the car after completing all the loan payments in option one? Let's do that first. I'm going to ask you to just copy this because you know how to how to work alone at this point, right? So we have compounded monthly. We're making monthly payments. We want the future value to be zero. We don't know what the payments are, so that's what I'm going to solve for. Present value, I need to add taxes to this, right? So I'm going to do that right here. 28,500 times 1.12. Actually, it's, it's too busy. Sorry, guys. Because I need to take the down payment off yet. So I actually did it up here. Uh, up here somewhere. So 28,500 plus tax is uh, 31,920. So we're going to go... 31,920 minus 5,000. That's 26,920. That's better. I'm going to do this. Okay. So you see the, that is where I got that from. Interest rate is 6.99. Uh, this is a five year loan uh, and you make monthly payments, that's 60. And you just copy now, okay? We're not gonna use a TVM solver. This is uh, 532.92. 532.92. Cost of the car. Cost of car. Let's see if you follow me here. You, if you think about it, you made a down payment and you made n number of payments, right? That were, uh, so we would just multiply this tax payment. This is how much you paid for the car at the end of the day, correct? Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna go cost is uh, 5,000 plus 60 payments of 532.92. 
it never asked us to figure out the payment. So I just filled in what I knew. I came up with my payment here. And that's what I'm using to figure out the cost of this loan, of the car. I should say. Cost would be 5,000 plus. Uh, here it is, 31,975. But Mr. Dirksen, I only borrowed 26,000. You're telling me I paid them 31,900? Yeah, right. So there's that interest. So that would be total of, you add it up, that's 36,975. Read the question carefully. If it had just said, how much did you pay the bank in total, you would not include the down payment. But this is how much it is for the car. We're almost done. Now we're gonna talk lease. <clears throat> Before you do anything with lease, we're going to figure out the mileage cost. Okay, before I do, before I use my formula, this is always advised to do it on the side. Um, the lease is how long? How many months is the lease? It says it right up there in option two. It's for 48 months, right? 48 months is the equivalent of four years. I'm allowed how many kilometers per year? It's not always gonna be 20,000, but here it is. So I'm allowed 80,000 kilometers. B, if you read here, uh, what's Sam's total lease obligation, option two, including the purchase, if Sam drives 97,000 kilometers. So how many over am I? 17,000. So I'm going to go over by 97,000 minus 80,000. That's 17,000 kilometers. Right? Cost will be 17,000 kilometers times we were told it's eight cents per kilometer. You have to put on the uh, taxes yet. And this gives you 1,523.20 extra for mile. That's, that's how much that would be just for the extra kilometers. So total lease would be the down payment plus you made 48 payments of, in this case, it says $401. You're going to smack the uh, taxes on there and we'll just add the mileage cost to this. This ends up being 5,000 plus 21,557 and 76 cents plus 15,23,20. Total lease would be 28,080.96. That's just the lease. That's just the lease. But you're going to buy it, right? Purchase. How much is it worth at the end? It does say, tell us. It says $12,000 plus taxes. And that gives us 13,000. Oh my goodness. Sorry guys. But we add these two up to get our total. Total is 41,520.96. Uh, for tomorrow's quiz, I don't think lease will be on there. If it is, you should know the basics. Just have the formulas on there, right? See you tomorrow, guys.